Hello everyone, this is Chris from Spoon Graphics back with another tutorial. A couple of months ago I showed you how to create vintage designs the easy way using a brilliant new tool called Kittle, formerly Heritage Designer before its rebrand and fresh new look. Today we're going to use those powerful tools and features again to easily construct this retro logo design for a merchant trading company. It combines a variety of retro style design aesthetics such as lettering layouts, engraved line effects and angled text shapes all of which are easily done in Kittle. Kittle combines everything you need to create stunning designs in one revolutionary tool. No longer do you need to buy expensive fonts, logo templates, stock design assets or even software. Kittle has it all directly in your browser. You can use advanced editing tools, some of which are even better than Adobe's, and drag and drop functionality to easily build your designs. Choose from hundreds of ready-made templates or start with a blank canvas, then customise the text and layouts with a complete library of fonts, illustrations, ornaments and effects. Follow the link in the description to kit.tl slash spooner to sign up for a free account to access all the tools and features to follow along with this tutorial. So right on the Kittle homepage you can start to browse through thousands of ready-made designs. Each one of them can be used as a foundation for your own design. You can filter through the categories to find different types of layouts, such as logos, posters or labels. We're going to be making a badge style logo in this tutorial, so if we filter down further we can look at all the badge layouts, which will all feature some kind of containing shape, like those wonderful retro and vintage logos from previous generations. If you did want to use any of these ready made layouts, just click use this design, then you can edit the text and make this the Chris Spooner company in seconds. We're going to create a completely custom retro style badge design, so over in the left toolbar choose new projects to create a blank canvas. In the elements section there are loads of badge layouts of various shapes you can choose to get started. This particular layout is quite unique and lends itself to adding several text elements. The colours of the project are easy to change, let's start by giving the background a pale green hue. Every object comes with a series of default colours but they can all be customised. This shape has four swatches which correspond to the different pieces. Just like with the shape elements there's also a library full of ready made type layouts too. We're going to build our own so click add headline, then set the alignment to centre and scale it to fill the badge shape. Kittle comes bundled with all the Google fonts, plus the full catalogue of premium typefaces from Heritage Type. Milk Story is one of my favourites that I regularly use in Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator, so it's great that it's available directly in this browser based editor too. Despite being a browser based editor, it still comes packed with all the features and functionality you'd expect from pro design software. You can manipulate the text just as you would in Illustrator, such as increase the tracking, plus even more advanced features that aren't available in the Adobe apps as we'll see later. You can also use keyboard shortcuts such as plus and minus to zoom in or out, and there's a familiar layers panel to organise your project. Under the transformation panel there are several one click effects such as arch or distort, which can then be customised further with the bezier handles. These are a great way to customise the type to produce interesting layouts. One of those features that is a massive improvement over what is available in Photoshop or Illustrator is the text effects. While it's possible to create all these styles in the Adobe apps, it takes considerable work. Here you can easily apply these great retro and vintage text effects and adjust them visually using the options sliders. No need to mess around creating blends, clipping masks or offset paths. One little trick you might like is that you can add a border to your text and by giving it the same colour as the base text, it helps to knock out any line effects you've added to further customise the appearance. Let's continue adding more text elements with another headline. It's easy to select the same colour you've used previously because they're all saved in the document palette, but stick around till the end to also see how the entire project's colours can be changed all in one go. This particular typeface is a variable font, which means you can adjust its width using the variable slider and the entire font will change shape to accommodate. Let's give this text an angle transformation, set at 50%. There are all sorts of basic shapes you can make use of in various ways, like using this long thin rectangle as a simple detail. To make a duplicate for the other side, alt and drag the text, 
then alter the angle to a minus figure so it leans the other way. The rectangle detail shapes can also be copied across. Use the flip horizontal option from the right click menu to mirror them. The variable font also comes in handy to be able to adjust the overall width of the wording so it fits perfectly without looking squashed. It's really handy having a library of assets built right in because you can often find elements that you would otherwise have to construct manually in Illustrator. Adding a border to this shape but removing the fill helps to match its appearance to the lines at either side of it. Create a new headline but in the font selector go all the way to other because we're going to make use of this really cool monogram font. All you have to do is type two letters, so M and T for merchant trading in this case. Hitting the T key is a handy shortcut for adding a new headline, so let's set up some more filler text. The circle transformation makes it easy to create type on a path effects. You can even manipulate the little handle to tweak the shape to perfectly match the outline. Every font also has a glyphs panel you can view, so you can find little elements like this dividing dot which will move with the text rather than place a separate circle graphic. If you click through to the illustrations section of the elements panel, you can see the huge library of graphics available, ranging from simple outlines to detailed drawings. I'm looking for a bridge, so typing that in brings up all the options to consider. This one fits nicely. All the default colours can be changed to match the project so it blends in perfectly, rather than looking like a piece of clip art we've just copied and pasted. You can also build upon the basic illustrations, so let's add a little sun graphic and help it blend in with the project colours. Then add a few extra details using simple shapes to help ground the illustration into the overall layout. Let's add one more piece of text towards the bottom. This time we'll find a nice script font like Corner Store. Then if we browse through the glyphs panel again we can find some really nice swashes. A wave effect always goes well with script fonts to give them a retro look. Then some really nice shading effects can be set up using the block shadow option. It's little details like this that really enhance the text, yet they're so easy to set up. As a finishing touch let's add a ray element, sized quite large to cover the entire logo. Right click and choose send to back to turn it into a little background detail to draw in the eye. Retro and vintage designs always look great with subtle grainy textures and there are loads of built in textures available. The textures are set to colour burn by default, so they interact with the colours of the design, but you can alter the opacity to tone down its prominence. I showed earlier how the document colours were all easily accessible, so you can set up a little colour palette of hues to make use of. If you decide you want to edit the overall colours of the design, you can target each colour in the document and it will be updated in every single place it's used. Once you've finished your design you can export it in a variety of formats. Choose your desired size and even remove the background, then export it in a raster or vector format. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learned any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.